Negative externalities come up all the time in Module 2. And it's very important you know the diagram which shows negative externalities and how they can be corrected, and also that you understand the definition of negative externalities. Negative externalities, sometimes called external costs, are the costs that separate social costs, the entire costs of an economic activity, from private costs, the costs which are borne by the buyers and sellers involved in the economic activity. In other words, external costs, that is, negative externalities, are the costs paid for by third parties, that's usually society as a whole. Industries like the tobacco industry, alcohol, car use, road use, all create massive negative externalities. And we can show that on a diagram. On the vertical axis we have costs and benefits. On the horizontal axis we have quantity or output. The marginal social benefits are downward sloping. There is no distinction between private and social benefits in a negative externality diagram. But there is a distinction between the costs. The marginal private costs, upward sloping, creates an equilibrium point here, Q1, which represents the market generated level of output. That's the level of output that would be created if we left things to market forces. They wouldn't consume more than this because the next unit would create more cost than benefit. So even when only considering private costs and benefits, Q1 is the level of output that would be generated by the price mechanism. But this is market failure because we should also consider the external costs, which we can add to the private costs, and this gives us a parallel marginal social cost curve which is higher by a distance, a vertical distance equal to the external costs, higher than the private costs. Now we have a new equilibrium position here, and a new output level, Q2, which is the socially optimal level of output. The best level of output for society. But we have market failure, because the market gives us Q1 too much. Every unit between Q2 and Q1 generates more cost than benefit, and we can see that on a diagram by looking at this area, which is the summation of all of these units of outputs, cost exceeding benefit, cost exceeding benefit. So all of this area is the overproduction caused by the failure of the market mechanism, and we can label this the welfare loss to society. It is the cost of the market failure. Perhaps systems like taxation or the extension of property rights, which adds to the private costs of the polluter and shifts the MPC curve plus tax upwards, can actually help alleviate the problem and correct the market failure because this generates a new output level and reduces the size of the welfare loss, which I will shade in blue. And this is a step in the right direction. It massively reduces it because the tax raises the price, reduces the quantity demanded, smaller quantities demanded, and this means we are overshooting the socially optimal level by a smaller distance, creating a smaller welfare loss. Of course, a tax could entirely tax away the externality, but such taxes would probably have to be very high in industries like tobacco or uh, car use, where the price elasticity of demand for cigarettes or for petrol is extremely inelastic. And so raising price doesn't reduce quantity demanded very much. This is an essential diagram for Module 2. You must learn it. Okay? Thank you.